What's the first thing you think of when you see a shiny new woodpecker's tool? Yep, I think the same thing. Why is that thing so expensive? I mean, come on, really? The value of a dollar still means a lot to me, as it does to a lot of you as well. And in this video, I'm gonna single-handedly prove to you that I actually made woodpeckers use honest pricing for the first time ever, at least on one product. Let's go. In March of 2022, March 12th to be exact, I released that video. It is to bring to market an upside down sander mount to hold an orbital sander. Now, the idea of putting an orbital sander upside down is nothing new. This has been going on for years in the woodworking community. People have been putting clamps on their workbench or fashioning different jigs and fixtures. So the idea has always been there, okay? Who came up with it? I don't know but there wasn't a single product on the market that made this process easy. So I figured why not? I'll make one for me and I'll pass it on to the audience. And guess what? Since that release date, it has been one of, if not the most profitable item and best-selling item that I have. And I say I had a good run. Now why is that? Because in April of this year, 13 months later, this came out. This is the Woodpecker's Sand Stand. Now, I, and signed up for the newsletter and before I even had a chance to open up the emails that morning, I got messages and a lot of them. Through Instagram direct messaging, I got so many messages that morning that it was a little crazy. I was like, man, this, this is nuts. I mean, Woodpeckers has come up with, in theory, something different, but in concept, very much the same. Did they copy my design? No. They simply came up with a better mousetrap, well, at least a different mousetrap in my opinion. And the first thing I did when I saw this was I ordered one. So I was one of the first people to actually sign up and buy one of these things. And I thought, oh boy, how much is it gonna be? It was gonna be $400, $500? No, $250 maybe? No, they introduced this thing at $80, 80 bucks. Now they have precision pocket squares. I mean, maybe a six inch square they're gonna see here. That's. $79.99, that's the same price. Hmm. Well, they also have triangles as a one-day tool or a one-time tool, and these triangles range from anywhere from $259 and all the way down. Um, their prices are really high, but why is this not very high? Why is this product not very expensive? I thought, well, I gotta get it in my hands because it's gonna be cheap. It's gonna be not well put together. And I'm, I'm like, are they really gonna do this? Well. I'm gonna tell you what, man. I got it in and I got some strong feelings about how it's constructed. And I'll get to those in a little bit, for sure. But you guys gotta know that I really am proud of my audience because they came to bat for me. Check this out. So here's what I mean by people going to bat for me. On Instagram, on the Woodpeckers page where they were announcing this product, check this out. Now, I've gone ahead and bleeped out some of the names here. I just don't wanna, you know, blast people's thoughts if you know they don't have my consent, so that's what I did. So we got, hey Chris from A Glimpse Inside, remember imitation is the highest form of flattery. Yours looks better. And then somebody said, wait, this is actually affordable? What's the catch? Do you only get the box? <laughs> and then someone was like, oh my God, I really, I mean, I literally just was telling my wife that I wish there was a stand for my sander so I could flip it upside down. And then of course, but it's from A Glimpse Inside. And then furthermore, we've got someone saying, support A Glimpse Inside and you will be supporting a small family. Again, this is on the Woodpecker's page. And then somebody else, hmm, that looks very familiar. I think I saw that about a year ago. And then moving forward, we have the introductory price is probably one of the most reasonably priced Woodpecker products I've ever seen, or I've seen yet. Great idea for a small shop that can't afford the space of a belt sander. And then somebody replied, well, yeah, because they've got no money in designing it, they simply or they just copied someone else's design. And finally, a glimpse inside, I guess you should feel honored that they ripped the idea off of you, real classy woodpeckers. After reading all those comments, I thought clearly maybe woodpeckers has either now gotten wind of this product, but I had a feeling that probably they knew about it beforehand. And <laughs> you wanna see the craziest thing? Check this out. These are production update emails that came through. I'll let you pause the screen and read it. I'm not gonna focus on it too much. That's crazy. All right, moving on, moving on. God bless. Well, here's the deal. It wasn't necessarily ripped off of me, but here's what I do know. 
I do know that during the time frame that I was developing this product, there was nothing like it. On Amazon, couldn't search it for Google. I couldn't find it on Alibaba, I couldn't find it anywhere. And so I was like, well, there's probably a market for this. And there was. It has been our number one selling item since its introduction. It actually beat out the tool holder. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a quick backstory on why I even do this in the first place. Okay, real talk here. The long and the short of it is, is that I was a corporate manager for 23 years with a company called Publix. I was a bakery manager. And eventually, through the story, I've told it a hundred times here on this channel, um, and actually there's a whole video dedicated to this story. If you wanna go check it out, it's my channel trailer on the homepage. Um, anyway, I had to be here at home for my kids, for my wife. There were just some things going on that I had to be here. Uh, it was a necessity for me to be home. So I was very fortunate at this point that YouTube had provided some income along the way, some extra income, and we had over 100,000 subscribers at this point, and the income was getting pretty somewhat sustainable. I thought maybe I could go full time if I need to. Well, I was at a crossroads. I wanted to still work in corporate America and continue to build this channel and have a kind of like, as a single person, be like a dual income family, um, but it just wasn't in the cards that way. So I got some pretty heavy hitting videos and they're doing well, and I figured I could make the jump. And I'll be honest with you guys. Um, a channel of my size at that time, getting about a million views or so per month, total channel wise, we were doing all right. I mean, I'll be real honest. I'll be, you know, if you want to wonder what some YouTubers make, it just varies uh, depending on the view count and, and what era, like what, what category they're in. But you could typically bank on, they get about anywhere between eight to $10 for every thousand views they get. So, you know, we were getting about 8,500 bucks a month. I thought maybe that was sustainable for a family like this. It was, it was give or take, okay? It was some less, some more. Um, two months after going full time, the heavy hitting videos that I had went from about a million views, <laughs> okay, uh, every month to about 300,000. So what's that mean? Well, I took about a 70% pay cut and that's not sustainable. And so I, well, I was at this crossroads where I have to do something. I've got to figure this out and I made this. I made an epic drill holder, which I thought the public might like. I thought maybe if I made something on a CNC that you know, if we've made it sexy enough, if we've made it cool enough, and then I offered it to the audience, I was overwhelmed. And then what happened was, is that $9,000 came through in the first week of me putting these tool holders out, and I thought, okay, this is crazy. I'm not set up to ship. I don't know what I'm doing. I remember the first 10 orders that came in, it took me seven hours almost, it felt like. I think it was about seven hours to get the whole process done in the shipping. I just had no clue what I was doing. Um, fast forward a little bit more, I, I've actually streamlined this. I have a whole shipping station. If you've been following along, this business has grown to where it has somewhat subsidized the lack of the views that we're getting now. And I just can't thank you enough. The support has been amazing. So we came up with that tool holder. We came up with various other products like clamp racks and all kinds of stuff. 90 degree clamp assist. I mean, you can check the website. I'll put a link down below. But the funny part is, is that when I developed this upside down sander holder, it was all because of necessity. I was making so many individual parts that I had no other option than to come up with something that could help me do this. And so there was the genesis. Now, honestly, I told you earlier in the video, I had strong feelings about the product that I ordered from them. Let's talk about that now. Okay, so let's talk about this thing for a second. Um, so I told you I had strong feelings about it. And they're really good, actually. They actually have developed a really cool and useful tool. Um, as far as build quality goes, this thing is rock solid. It is made from eighth inch steel, powder coated perfectly. There's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, of course, it was engineered by the Woodpecker's team. But honestly, I would fully expect to pay 280 to maybe 300 bucks for this thing, considering that I've purchased their products in the past, um, especially like some so a set of rulers for you know 400 dollars. <sighs> Crazy. So it's good, man. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit here and use it and tell you all about it and its quirks and features and all that. I'm just gonna tell you that they developed a quality product. But you know what? I did too. And there is one small caveat. I will say this, is that to get this sander out, you've gotta take this thing like this and move it 
and then you're good to go, which isn't that much of a big deal. But putting it back together can be a little cumbersome. Again, it's not too bad if it's all, if it's, if it's all set up just right. But anyway, 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 okay? It works. But there is a cool feature about mine. If you want to go from upside down to just sanding, all you got to do is just pop it out and do your sanding. And then once it's all established, it just pops right back in and you're sturdy as hell. All right. So that's pretty cool. So got a lot of messages and a lot of emails and just whatever about patenting this thing. Chris, you should have patented. This is what's going to happen. Let me just tell you right now, patents are like door locks. They only keep the honest people out. Honestly, seriously, people go around patents all the time. Ask woodpeckers, okay? Ask them about the people in China who are building their tools essentially for an eighth of the cost. And you can buy them on Alibaba or Timu or whatever they are. So they, they've definitely fallen victim to this for sure. Um, but they, even if I had a broad patent that would have cost me $20,000 or so, that design would have circumnavigated it somehow anyway. Uh, and even if it did, or if it did not, I still do not have the legal team to go against them. I do not have, I don't want to just deplete my life savings, my children's fund for college or whatever. I don't want to do that, you know? So let's just not even talk about that. I mean, you can if you want in the comments spawn off some ideas about what I should have done about patents. But honestly, like I said, they're door locks. They keep honest people out. You know, to all the viewers and all the audience members who have really supported us over the years, thank you so much. Um, if you, you don't know who I am and this is your first time here watching this video, my name's Chris and I am a retail manager converted into this YouTuber slash inventor fabricator and I basically make for makers, right? I am not necessarily a woodworker, right? And woodworkers as a group of people typically have extra income. Let's just be honest. You got your woodworkers, you got your golfers, there are people who enjoy a hobby that are that is typically a little more expensive than your average, you know, underwater basket weaving or whatever. So I've never really been a woodworker. I've always just been in the maker space. Like I said, the value of a dollar still means a lot to me. You know, I'm not driving a Mercedes or an Escalade or anything like that. So I want to tell you guys thank you so much. And Honestly, I wouldn't be here and doing this without you guys, and I would be remiss if I didn't just say, y'all rock. Really, you do. And again, if it's your first time here, I'm going to welcome you down to the website. Check out what we do. Welcome to the channel. Subscribe. Actually, I actually have a sale going on right now on these. These are maker push sticks. I love these things. One's a skinny rip. Look at that. Look how thin that is for your thin material. And one's your kind of run of the mill every day. And these really are on sale. They're, they're only $15 for two. You get the combo for 15, but honestly, I'm at that price. I'm just about giving them away with labor and everything. So they're going up to 20 and that will be ending in a few days. Um, and honestly, what I do have for sale is going to be on the screen there. I got some sandpaper storage and, of course, a digital plan that's half off for an outdoor table. It's summertime. This is a great time to build one of those, too. So thank you for showing your support. I really appreciate it. So what do I expect? I mean, nothing. You know, expectation management is one of life's greatest skills, if you can master it. What you expect out of people, companies, whatever has to be something that you have to manage within yourself. And I didn't expect anything from this, nor do I still. What I do expect, though, is for me to keep innovating and to keep doing what we do here, right? Just like you are expected to keep doing what you need to do to take care of what you have to take care of, that's all I can do here. And I can ask you to not buy their product, and I won't. I can ask you to only buy mine, but I won't. Because the honest thing to do is to tell you, did they build a Belder mousetrap? Like I said before, no. It's different. I will say this. If you need your orbital sander to prove to you that it can do multiple things, if it needs to sand at a 90, at a 45, all different angles, maybe even be mounted on a wall, then that's for you. But if you need your orbital sander to be propped upside down quickly, once it's set, take care of some precision work, pop it back out, and then sand like normal, then yeah, mine's for you. But you know what, I'm gonna let you make that call. Below are both products, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna put mine above the Woodpecker's one, okay? But I am gonna put them both there. You can go check them out, make this judgment for yourself, and again, 
thank you so much for watching. It's been pretty crazy, this little David and Goliath moment that's happened over the past month or so. And the fact that Woodpeckers has never priced an item so inexpensively that has, to me, such great quality. And I really do feel like I had something to do with that, for sure. Maybe I'll wear it as a badge of honor, who knows. Thank you for joining me, guys. I appreciate it. And if you're new here, subscribe. And I just, I can't thank you enough. I'll see you on the next video. See ya.